So today we'll be working on a charcoal value scale. I've already pre-toned my drawing paper using a little chunk of fine charcoal, so I just rubbed that on there, buffed it all in with a paper towel so that everything is a light shade of gray. And then we're going to divide this off. So I already used a little bit of vine charcoal. This is very uh, erasable charcoal. And I lightly gridded off an eight step value scale. Now for your value scale, I want you to have one pure white, one pure black, and at least, at least five other shades of gray. So you have to have five shades of gray plus black, and then your white would be uh, the seventh step. I've got a, one extra step here just to show you, but you could make a 12 step value scale or a 10 step value scale. But the minimum I'm going to allow you to do is a seven step value scale. So pure white, pure black, and then all the shades in between. Now our goal is to make these steps as even as possible so that when, um, when we squint our eyes we shouldn't see any big jumps between value 2 and value 3 or value 6 and value 7 for example. Each step should be incremental and um, sort of the same jump in value. So since we need a white step and we've pre-toned our paper, we have to actually go backwards and try to get rid of this tone that's on this first square. One tool that's going to be really helpful is to have a scrap of fairly heavyweight paper with nice clean edges. This is a torn edge, but I'm going to be using the, two, the three edges that are cut commercially so that I have a really crisp edge there. And in the end, we need to make sure that none of our line work shows. So we can't have black lines between the steps, and we don't want white erase lines either. We want one value right up against the other one so that we can really compare whether those values are consistent. We also want to make sure that the value is blended from edge to edge of each square. So we shouldn't have patches of light and patches of dark within each one of these squares. So I find it easiest to try to get my solid black in first. And the charcoal that's best for doing the solid black is the compressed charcoal. So the vine charcoal gets pretty dark gray, but it's also very fragile. So if you, if you put a piece of paper down on it or if your finger touches the vine charcoal, it's no longer going to be solid black. So to get the true black, we have to go in with compressed charcoal. And I'm not drawing in lines. This is really important to really think about this as shapes of value and not about outlined areas. So you'll notice that there's some texture to this paper that prevents me from getting a solid black just by drawing. So we need to go back in with our finger, or you can use something like this rolled paper blending stump. And the goal is just to get rid of any little spots of white that might still be showing through. So you're going to be buffing that in. I'm going to block off this square just so I can get a nice, perfectly solid black area there. So get rid of every single little speck of white that shows through in that area. We're aiming for the velvetiest black that we can get there. Charcoal does wash off your hands and it washes off your clothes, uh, but I wouldn't wear your best clothes to do charcoal. Do try to um, think about that. Okay, so that's a nice rich solid black. I don't see any white in that area. And then we're going to try to go back to pure white over here. So again, we've got this line. In the end, we don't want any of those lines to show, but I'm just going to block off the area that I want to try to keep that light gray. And then you can use your kneaded eraser. With the kneaded eraser, remember it starts like this. You're going to peel it open, and then you're just going to, as it gets dirty, you just keep stretching it out and folding it over, and it'll clean itself. It'll also help clean your hands, you know, as you're working. If your hands just get too filthy, you can rub this kneaded eraser across it, and that helps keep your fingers clean, too. So you can take off some charcoal with the kneaded eraser, but it's not going to take everything off. So usually you have to revert to either your vinyl eraser, which is a little bit more sturdy white eraser, or if you have a pink pearl or a blue, you know, rubber eraser, you're just going to go in and you're just going to scrub the heck out of <laughs> that first area. Get it as white as you can. I mean, it may be that you can't get it spotless white because you have still a little bit of that vine charcoal showing up, but scrub it until nothing else is coming off and get rid of any of the little crumbs. One of the problems with the vinyl and the kneaded or the vinyl erasers and the rubber erasers is that you do end up with all these crumbs and you end up having to touch your drawing, which ends up smearing it again usually. So sometimes I'll just like pick it up and, and tap it over the trash can to try to get all of that, those crumbs to drop off. 
So let's squint our eyes here and we've got a pretty big jump. It might be that we need to lighten this even a little bit more. So maybe what I'll do is I'll try to let the base tone be our value three and see if we can get one more light tone in here. So we do need to eventually get rid of these lines of vine charcoal. And this time, instead of scrubbing it as bright as I possibly can, I'm gonna just try to lift maybe half of the charcoal that's on there to go a little bit lighter. So I'm just using the kneaded eraser. That doesn't pick up quite as much as the vinyl erasers will. And on this edge, again, I want that tone to go from edge to edge. So you can use this masking piece of paper with the eraser or with the charcoal. But the goal here is that we should have a distinct value change. So this is a little brighter than this. And then you, when you squint, this is a little brighter than that. And now we need to start adding a little bit more charcoal to these values. So since all of these need to go a little bit darker, sorry, from here on, you can take your vine charcoal and instead of just thinking of one at a time, you might just add a little bit of tone to all of these because they'll all have to be at least that dark. So we're just gonna go a little bit darker here. We're gonna have to adjust things back and forth as we have a little bit more information, but for now, we just wanna have from here down, all blend a little bit better. We're trying to suppress that texture from the texture of the paper. And in the end, you can be trimming this whole value scale out. So I'm not too worried about being tidy at the top and bottom, but I want the individual steps to have a nice clean edge to them. So you want this to be a pretty stable value. If it keeps lifting off, we may have to start adding more compressed charcoal to it to get those darker tones. So, so this might still be a little bit big of a jump compared to how small of a jump is here and here. I might go even a little bit lighter here, which means maybe just lifting a little bit more of that off with the palm of my hand. This, just your skin can lift up, off those, the charcoal a little bit more. Or a paper towel could make it a little bit lighter. I notice we still have a little bit of a line there, so we're gonna have to do some work to try to hide that line. And still have that tone be even. So it's kind of a back and forth balance. Now these two might be a little bit too close together and I might have to bring a little more in. So you're just gonna kind of fuss them back and forth until we have very clear steps. Now I'm gonna try to get a step that's not solid black, but a very dark gray. So I'm gonna go back with my compressed charcoal at this end of the value scale but not press as hard as I pressed on the last one. So we're gonna add a little bit more tone, blend it in, and I don't want it to go solid black, but I want it to be a even, I'm gonna use a little bit of a paper towel here to try to buff down some of that graininess. And I'm using this masking to try to keep that edge nice and crisp. And then I can protect the black here too from getting wiped away as I'm trying to even that tone out. So try to get rid of any splotchy black areas if, if you notice them. All right, so now we have to figure out here. I think we still need to go a little bit darker here because I'm seeing a big jump here. This might be a little too subtle of an area. So I'll go back in with a tiny bit more vine here sending it over all of these areas so they're also getting a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more compressed here, but it can't be as dark as this, so it's kind of a fine balancing act. not to have any light and dark patches within that single square there. So squinting your eyes can really help you notice where there's where the values are too close together or too big of a separation. So th these three still feel too similar to me so I'm going to try to go even a little bit lighter on this one but not quite as light as that. So just a matter of you know fine touch and
I don't want it to be darker at this edge and then get lighter there. I want to, if I isolate both of the neighboring values, it helps you realize that sometimes that's an optical illusion there. You want to try to keep those tones just as, oops, <laughs> that's the problem. If I kind of hold them all down, I should be able to blend across that rectangle and keep them all more of a consistent tone there. Okay, now I still see a little bit of a line here, so that's not going to work there. I need to kind of hide the line. If you have a really fine eraser, or what might be a little safer, since this might take off the base tone, you could use your kneaded eraser and put it, make a real fine point to it. And then sometimes you can hit just the line to hide that line if that's still showing up a little bit. Okay. So looking at this, I feel like there's too big of a jump here now. And I also feel like this is getting a little bit lighter. And it's hard to tell when the neighboring values are, are showing. But if we isolate that shape, I feel like I, I rubbed a little too much on that one edge. So we want to make sure that we make sure that that's a more consistent tone from edge to edge. So I might need to add a little bit more compressed charcoal on that side. Keep that tone really consistent. Okay. Yeah, these two, I mean, th these two now seem really close together. That's a big jump. These two are pretty similar, so I think I need to go a little lighter on this one. Take it right to that edge. Okay, so that's looking better, those three. This is still a pretty big jump here, and this is a little too small, so I think I need to add a little bit more. And sometimes just picking up a little bit of charcoal from another square that has compressed on it adds, you have a little more control over how much charcoal is going down. Still seems like there's a little bit of a light patch there at that edge, so I want to better job blending that. So do check each square to make sure it's as consistent a value from side to side as you can make it. And you can use either erasing or adding charcoal to get you to the tone that you need. I would like this to be a little bit more distinct here. Right to that edge. And I feel like this edge might still be a little bit lighter than the rest of the square. But that gives you an idea of where you might be heading with this. So if we were to isolate this square, let's see if I have one more. We want to have a pretty even progression here. And squinting my eyes, I feel like, again, it might need a little more work here. I feel like these two values are, are not quite distinct enough, but there's a pretty good even jump here. So I think maybe just going a little bit darker on that one square might be getting us pretty close. we're getting closer. But anyway, I could do a little bit of touch up here. It seems like there's a few little glowing white spots there. In the end, if you want to trim it down and just photograph it on pure white paper, that'll be a little bit easier to tell how the values are working at the edges here. So I think I'll pause the video for a second and um, trim it out and show it to you on white paper. So here's our finished value scale all trimmed up with scissors. And before you turn it in, what I'd like you to do is just squint your eyes again at it and see if there's any spots where you have a big jump in value. 
make sure that each value is distinct from edge to edge. So I'd like you to just sort of take a couple scraps of paper and just look at each square one at a time. Look for any areas of that square where there's a light patch or a dark smear and buff it in till all of those squares are as consistent as you can get them from edge to edge. Try to get your black as solid black as you can by rubbing that charcoal down into the grain of the paper and get your light gray as light as you can. Again, uh, if you haven't toned your paper already, you could protect that one from the toning, keep it stark white, and just tone the other sheets. And then your first step would probably be even a little bit lighter than mine. I can still see a tiny bit of charcoal residue on there, which is fine. It's just I've got an extra shade of gray, but I still have at least six different values that um, I can submit. If you wanted to try to prevent this from smearing at all, you could protect it with a little cover sheet of newsprint or another scrap of paper. You can also spray charcoal lightly if you've got uh, inexpensive hairspray like Aquanet or some you know really cheap hairspray. Spray it very lightly. You don't want to be saturating it or you'll shift the colors even darker, but a real light spray will help prevent the vine charcoal from smearing. Compressed charcoal usually is fine without being spray fixed because it's a more durable charcoal to start with, but if you're doing a lot of drawing with the vine charcoal, it tends to, um, you'll just lose it if you put a cover sheet on it and then you go to lift it up and look at the drawing another time, half the drawing transfers off onto your newsprint. So it's really frustrating if you put a lot of effort into a charcoal drawing to have it ruined like that by putting a cover sheet on it. So in that case, you might want to spray fix it. You can also buy a commercial workable spray fixative that um, is supposed to be a little bit more archival, but um, in any case, you do want to protect your drawing from smearing once you put a lot of work into it.